Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams with the midday news. The headlines: Global hunger index indicators flawed do not reflect the country's true picture, asserts Women and Child Development Minister Smriti Irani. Center making coordinated efforts to ensure people do not fall prey to dubious Chinese apps, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman. Month-long Kashi Tamil Sangamam to conclude today. Home Minister Amit Shah to address the closing ceremony. Bangladesh celebrates Vijay Divas today to mark the victory of 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. President Draupadi Murmu expresses gratitude to Indian Armed Forces. Indian hockey team to take on Ireland at the FIH Women's Nations Cup at Valencia in Spain today. And in the Chotogram Cricket Test, host Bangladesh bowled out for 150 in their first innings against India. The government today said the indicators of the Global Hunger Index are flawed and do not reflect the country's true picture. In reply to a question in the Lok Sabha, Women and Child Development Minister Smriti Irani said nutrition indicators for children under five years have improved in the country, and the Global Hunger Index should not be taken at face value, as it is neither appropriate nor representative of hunger prevalent in the country. She said, out of its four indicators, only one indicator that. is under nourishment is directly related to hunger another two indicators stunting and wasting are outcomes of complex contractions of various other factors like sanitation genetics environment and utilization of food intake apart from hunger which is taken as an outcome factor for stunting and wasting in the global hunger index she further added that there is hardly any evidence that the fourth indicator namely child mortality is an outcome of hunger The government is making coordinated efforts to ensure that people do not fall prey to dubious Chinese apps which are trying to cheat them. Responding to the issue during zero hour in the Rajya Sabha today, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman said, in the last seven months she had meetings with the RBI, her ministry officials, and other stakeholders to check the menace. Ms. Sitharaman said action has also been taken in the matter. That in the last six seven months I've had personally meetings. with the rbi representatives and with my secretaries in the ministry and action from the rbi side and also from our side has been our side also inclusive of the corporate affairs ministry has been initiated in this a lot of uh, such apps which have been uh, badly misused have also been uh, brought to the attention of maiti so there is a coordinated effort to contain such apps and also to take action against those who are misusing The government today said it will take appropriate steps regarding one nation one voter list after considering the various proposals and suggestions in a written reply to the Lok Sabha Law and Justice Minister Kiran Rijiju said the center will consider the matter after consultations with various stakeholders to make the election process more accountable and transparent he said the electoral reforms are a continuous and ongoing process meanwhile the law minister also clarified that there is no proposal under consideration to to provide proxy voting facility to non-resident indians and nris he was asked whether the center is considering to provide the facility to nris the center today clarified that the name of persons whose voter ids are not linked with aadhar will not be struck off voters list it stressed that linking of voter id with aadhar is voluntary this was stated by law minister kiran rijiju in a written reply in the lok sabha The Election Commission has launched the program to collect Aadhaar number of existing and prospective electorates on a voluntary basis from August this year. The government is setting up three bulk drug parks across the country for the supply of raw material for pharmaceutical industries. Replying to questions in the Lok Sabha, Minister of Chemicals and Fertilizers Dr. Mansukh Mandavia informed the House that these three parks are being developed at Andhra Pradesh, Himachal, and Gujarat. The minister informed the House that during COVID period, bulk drug parks were needed as raw material for production of medicines was primarily imported.
आने वाले दिनों में हमें बल्क ड्रग्स देश में ही बने इसलिए जब कोविड क्राइसिस आई उस वक्त हमने देखा कि देश में कई ऐसे एपीआई है कई से कई ऐसे बल्क ड्रग है जो हमें इम्पोर्ट पर डिपेंडेंट रखना पड़ता है ऐसे 41 एपीआई हमने आइडेंटिफाई किया था और देश में ही वो एपीआई बने उसके लिए हमने पीएलआई स्कीम लॉन्च किया पीएलआई वन और पीएलआई टू के माध्यम से फोर्टी वन इंडिया में ही बने उसके लिए इनिशिएटिव लिया गया The free trade agreement between India and Australia will come into force from the 29th of this month. While replying to a supplementary in the Rajya Sabha today, Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal said deliberations are underway with the European Union, Canada and the United Kingdom with regard to the free trade agreement. He said the world is seeing India as a trusted partner. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman today cited World Economic Forum data of 140 million middle income households to be added to India's economy by 2030 as a sign of India's strength going forward. WEF also projects 14 million high net individuals households to be added by 2030. Speaking at the 95th Thikki Indian Annual Convention in New Delhi, she highlighted several other uncertainties as well which are constraining the country's supply chains. She however said the WEF projections tell where the market potential lies. May say that I'm going to ask the Indian industry to work out strategies as to how businesses operating in developed countries can look at India as a production or sourcing hub amid recession fears in the Western countries. She highlighted that the government has brought in a lot of facilitation and tweaking of rules to attract foreign investment into India. In Bihar, the death toll in the Hooch tragedy in Saran district has risen to 59 as four more people have died. Maximum 26 deaths have been reported from Mashrak block, while remaining 33 casualties have been reported from Isuapur, Amnor and Marhora areas of the district. Our correspondent reports many people have also lost their eyesight. Saran district magistrate Rajesh Muna said four suppliers, including 123 persons, have been arrested so far. The Bihar government has constituted a special investigation team to probe the incident. Meanwhile, Bihar Assembly today witnessed noisy scenes over Hooch tragedy. As soon as the House assembled, opposition members trooped into the well of the House and shouted slogans seeking resignation of the Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. However, the Chief Minister reiterated that stern action will be taken against those persons responsible for the Hooch tragedy and nobody will be spared. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अगर आप कंपटीटिव एग्जाम्स की तैयारी कर रहे हैं, All India Radio के प्रस्तुति अभ्यास है सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपके लिए, जहां हमारे एक्सपर्ट आपके भेजे सवालों के जवाब शनिवार रात साढ़े नौ बजे देते हैं। इस बार का विषय है सोशियोलॉजी, यानी कि समाजशास्त्र। आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास। Welcome back to the Midday News. The month-long Kashi Tamil Sangamam in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh will conclude today. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will be present as the chief guest at the closing ceremony to be held at Banaras Hindu University. Our correspondent has filed this report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the Kashi Tamil Sangamam on 19th of the last month to give a boost to the age-old relationship between India's two ancient cultures, Kashi and Tamil Nadu. During the last one month, around 2,500 people from Tamil Nadu have visited Kashi and got to know about the art and culture, traditions, lifestyle and language of the Kashi and vice versa. During the celebration of Kashi Tamil Sangamam, a cultural show was being held daily in the evening in Banaras Hindu University in which artists from Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh displayed their art and culture, music and folk dances. Aditi Shukla, AIR News, Gorakhpur. The nation is celebrating Vijay Divas today to commemorate India's victory over Pakistan in the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. On this day, the sacrifice of war heroes is remembered and rich tributes are being paid to them. On the 16th of December in 1971, the chief of the Pakistani forces, General Amir Abdullah Khan Niazi, along with 93,000 troops, had surrendered unconditionally to the Allied forces led by Lieutenant General Jagjit Singh Aurora in Dhaka after their defeat. The end of the war resulted in the formation of Bangladesh. 
President Draupadi Murmu expressed gratitude towards the Indian Armed Forces on Vijay Divas, remembering the exceptional valour displayed by the country's armed forces during the 1971 war, the President said in a message, stories of armed personnel's unparalleled courage and sacrifice for the nation continue to inspire every Indian. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said India will never forget the valour of our armed forces that led to the win in the 1971 war. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh also extended his gratitude to the country's armed forces by laying a wreath at the National War Memorial in New Delhi this morning. In a message, Mr Singh said, Today the nation salutes the exemplary courage, bravery and sacrifice of India's armed forces. Bangladesh is also celebrating its 52nd Victory Day to mark its liberation from Pakistan in 1971. After a heroic battle that lasted for close to nine months, the Pakistani armed forces led by General A.A.K. Niazi surrendered with his 93,000 forces before the Indian military and the Mukti Bahini forces of Bangladesh. Our Dhaka correspondent has filed this report. On the occasion of the 52nd Victory Day, Vijay Divosh, 16th December 2022, the atmosphere in the city of Dhaka and other places in Bangladesh is of joy, of pride and a jubilant determination. President Abdul Hamid and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina witnessed the colourful parade by the Bangladesh Armed Forces at the National Parade Square in Dhaka, while schools, colleges, residential areas celebrated the Vijay Divas with flag hoisting, singing of the national anthem and organising cultural programme. The day is a testimony to India-Bangladesh relations as India played a key role in the liberation of Bangladesh. Rajesh Jha, AIR News, Dhaka. The 16th edition of the Indo-Nepal Joint Training Exercise Surya Kiran between India and Nepal starting today at Nepal Army Battle School, Saljhandi. Exercise Surya Kiran is conducted annually between India and Nepal. Our Kathmandu correspondent has filed this report. Nepal and Indian Army soldiers through Suri Kiran Joint Military Exercise in Sarjhandi, located in Lumbani province in southern Nepal, shall develop interoperability. During the exercise, participants training together shall be sharing the experiences gained during the conduct of various counter-insurgency operations in their respective countries. The joint exercise would focus on evolution of combined drills for planning and conduct of tactical operations at unit level in counter-terrorism operations. It would also assist in realizing the role of armed forces in management of disaster. The joint military exercise will enhance the level of defense cooperation which will further foster the bilateral relations between the two nations. Shweta Singh for All India Radio, Kathmandu. On to sports in the Chattogram Cricket Test hosts Bangladesh resumed their first innings of the overnight score of 133 for 8 against India and were bowled out at 150. India has started its second innings and has scored 156 runs for the loss of one wicket. India scored 404 runs in their first innings before being bowled out. The Indian women's hockey team will look to continue their winning run in the FIH Women's Nations Cup 2022 when they face Ireland in the semi-final in Valencia, Spain today. In the other semi-final, Spain will face Japan. The final will be played on Sunday. The Indian team remains unbeaten so far in the tournament, topping the group with nine points. They began their campaign with a dominant 3-1 win over Chile, then defeated Japan 2-1 before defeating South Africa 2-0 in their third Pool B match. The winning team of the Women's FIH Nations Cup will get direct entry into the 2023-24 FIH Pro League. The Sensex and the Nifty today witnessed modest losses in the afternoon trade. Both indices fell amid negative cues from global share markets. The BSE Sensex was trading below 61,600 points, while the NSE Nifty was trading below 18,350 level. The Sensex declined 217 points, or 0.35%, to trade at 61,582 points. Nifty was also down 78 points, or 0.42%, to trade at 18,337. European Union leaders added Bosnia to the list of official candidates to join the wealthy 27-nation bloc. The Western Balkans country joined the waiting room despite continuing criticism of the way it is run. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Global hunger index indicators flawed do not reflect the country's true picture, asserts Women and Child Development Minister Smithy Irani. 
Center making coordinated efforts to ensure people do not fall prey to dubious Chinese apps. As Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, month long Kashi Tamil Sangamam to conclude today, Home Minister Amit Shah to address the closing ceremony. Bangladesh celebrates Vijay Divas today to mark a victory of 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. President Ropti Murmu expresses gratitude to Indian Armed Forces. And in Chautogram, cricketers host Bangladesh gold out for 115 first innings against India. And with that, we end the midday news.